So we've all seen those ads pitching products claiming to lower cortisol. And these ads would have you believe that cortisol is the reason that you can't lose weight. It's why you have that belly fat. It's because everybody's so stressed out, stress hormone cortisol is blocking all your weight loss attempts. And also we see it with muscle magazines. If cortisol is high after a workout, that's gonna sabotage muscle building, that it's just gonna melt your muscle. So there's a lot out there about cortisol and I'd like to deep dive today into why that science has largely been taken out of context and why you don't need to be afraid of high cortisol as much as you think you might. So let's talk about what cortisol is. Cortisol is a steroid hormone that's made by the adrenal glands. Now it has a lot of major roles in the body, a lot of which you probably haven't heard. One is that it helps suppress inflammation, another is that it helps control blood pressure, and finally, and most important for what we're gonna talk about today, it helps to regulate blood glucose. So how does it do that? So when you're stressed out, or calories are low, carbs are low, you need more blood sugar. So your body gives the adrenals that message and that's where cortisol is released and helps to create sugar out of amino acids. Now this is really helpful in those times, right? Because you need energy, especially when you're stressed out. Back in the day when you would encounter an animal or something and you needed to run from that, you needed that energy. So this is where cortisol comes in. So let's talk about this in the context of the gym. When you go to the gym, you're working out hard. You're gonna be burning through your blood sugar. And when that gets low, your body's going to start to liberate glucose from around your muscle. And as you start to burn through that as well, then your body's gonna start creating its own sugar from protein. Now this is a sign that you've actually had a really good workout because you've been burning a ton of energy. So studies have actually shown that having higher cortisol levels after workout has been associated with greater gains in muscle mass and higher workout intensity. So then why is this a bad thing? Why does cortisol get such a bad rap? Well, the problem comes when cortisol is constantly elevated, when it's chronically elevated over time. Now, we do want cortisol to be high sometimes, right? As we've seen in situations of stress or low calories or during a workout maybe. And it also has something called a diurnal release, meaning that it's released at very high levels in the morning and that helps to wake a person up. And then as the day goes on, those levels decline. So it has kind of this natural rhythmic release. So if cortisol weren't high sometimes, that would be a major problem. So let's get back to this chronically high cortisol because that's where things get problematic. When cortisol is high for a very, very long period, such as with people who have a disease called Cushing's disease, what we see is a lot of muscle wasting. So again, your body is leaching proteins to create sugar to liberate that as fuel. So if it's constantly high, you are gonna see some muscle wasting. And also you're gonna see some strange effect on fat distribution. So these people tend to have kind of wasting in their limbs and fat more centered in their trunk and around their face. And sometimes they hold a little bit more water. So that's where this idea comes from that if you have high cortisol levels, you won't be able to lose weight because we do see this kind of extreme fat distribution. But it's important to understand that that's just the distribution. Now, whether you gain or lose weight is always gonna come down to energy balance, right? So we need higher calories in order to gain that weight. If you're not eating too many calories, you won't be gaining weight. But one thing that cortisol can do to cause people to gain weight is increase your appetite. But again, if you're not eating in excess, this isn't gonna happen. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, well, could I have high cortisol? Could that be impacting my ability to be able to control my calorie levels? Or might I be not building as much muscle as I could? Or could this be stopping my fat loss to some extent? And what it's important to understand here is that not very many people have this problem. Okay, it's vastly overstated. There's a lot of nutrition gurus out there who will just go straight to blaming high cortisol for everybody's problems because we are pretty stressed out in today's day and age, right? But the fact is, having this disorder is pretty darn rare. And it's usually caused by something like a brain tumor or an adrenal tumor. So very few people in the regular population actually have high enough cortisol levels that these sorts of things would happen. So at the end of the day, the idea that high cortisol is gonna stop you from losing weight or cause you to gain weight or cause you to lose all your muscle, that's just kind of this gimmicky fitness myth that was spun out of a theory that only partially makes sense. 
So when it comes to trying to lose weight, cortisol isn't necessarily something I would focus on. It's always a good idea to try to keep your stress levels down. It's a good idea to get eight or more hours of sleep, of course, because that's so important for controlling appetite hormones and how your brain perceives food and also with recovery. But I wouldn't dwell on cortisol necessarily. I would just try to get in a calorie deficit, control my exercise and control those other factors that you can control like stress and sleep.